Hey, I'm Gaff from Gaff Takes Photos, and today we're going to be looking at this the 5D Classic Mark 1, the original, the first one, and if you can still use it effectively today. So let's get into it. All right. Get the heavy camera bag off. So, let's set the scene a little bit, shall we? You have heard amazing things about full frame camera bodies and you're in the market for your first full frame camera and you don't want to spend too much money so you're looking at cheaper options and the 5D Classic pops up. Should you buy it? Well, Let's go into a few of the details, a few of the specs, and uh, see exactly if it's something you're into. Whew. Low pro bag, get that open. 5D Classic, low pro bag, gone. First of all, the specs of this camera are not going to set the world alight. Uh, you've got an almost close enough to 13 megapixel full frame sensor. You've got an ISO range of about 100 to 1600 and it is expandable up to 3200 but don't. <laughs> uh, you do have a screen on the back however you cannot use it for live view. So if you are looking to uh, use manual focus lenses this will be a little bit more difficult but not impossible. I think it's time for a bit of a story time now so how I chose this camera. Basically, back when I got into photography, which was around 2006, uh, I went to college, I did photography and we shot film. Uh, but the camera at the time, the one to have, was the Canon 5D. But no one in their right mind is going to buy a college student a 5D. You'd have to be mad to spend that sort of money on something that you might not continue. A few years later, I'm in the market again, I'm back into photography, and I figured, well, the 5G has got to be down in price now, let's have a look. So I picked up this camera body without the grip for £80, it come with a few batteries and the box and the instructions, and bang for buck, it's one of the best full frame cameras you can get, especially in the price range between £80. They don't go for that very often, but you can find them for that much. Given that I was buying this because it was my dream camera when I was younger, I wasn't really that bothered about the specs or the lack of specs compared to modern cameras. Uh, modern cameras will have a lot more useful things like IBIS or face eye autofocus. Um, this just straight up doesn't have that. This doesn't even shoot video. So if you're looking for a bare bones camera that's going to help you learn, this might be the one. Right, to test this camera, I've come to Harlow Town Park. Um, I feel like there's a varied amount of scenes you can get here, uh, so it should be a good test to see how this handles just normal everyday shooting, um, and if it can still keep up with the likes of my Sony a7R 2 which I'm filming on right now. Uh, first lens, Canon 80-200L lens. We're gonna take some pictures of ducks. Not that exciting. It is what it is, but it's what I've got, so, uh, Let's snap some pictures of ducks. Uh, something to note is if you're going to be using this for wildlife photography, it's not the best camera suited for that. It does max out at a three frames a second. And you can get apparently about 17 raw shots in a row before that just stops. Admittedly, that's quite a long time at three frames a second. But at the same time, three frames a second isn't really that much. So you might end up missing uh, the bird in flight or whatever you are trying to shoot. Like I was trying to shoot some seagulls flying just now. I think I nailed a couple of shots in focus, but I definitely missed the ones I wanted to get. But is what it is. This is an old camera at this point. That's exactly why we're testing it to see if it can be used today. Here we are at the Harlow Town Park's uh, splash area. As you can see, as promised by the local council, it is currently operational as of 2020. 
couple of years late, but they, they might turn it on eventually. So for this shot, I'm going to be using the Canon 17 to 40 mil. Uh, I'm going to try and get the whole splash area in one ultra wide photo. Um, settings are f/8, ISO 100, one four hundred for a second. Let's uh, see if I can get it all in one. Stand back. Stand well back. works got it all in one frame I do love this 17 to 40 mil lens it is great and mounted on this body it's a it's pretty damn impressive still let's see I might get in the splash area and get a picture of that ball thing whatever that is it's got fish on it so fish ball let's go take a picture of a fish ball Well, we're here at the fish ball. As you can see, it's a it's a ball thing with fish on it. Um, gonna try and get a nice low facing up ultra wide angle shot. I do like those. Might accentuate how big it is, make it look like a, a rather large member rather than what it actually is. So let's try. Yeah, this place actually worked. Right, next up is a picture of that tree again using the 17 to 40 lens. Settings are fairly similar f8 ISO 100. Shutter speed of 1 3 20th of a second. Um, I just I love ultra wide lenses. I mean, if if you could choose one lens to go out and about with for a day, it probably would be the ultra wide. Um, Especially a 17 to 40, that range is quite useful. So let's get a nice picture of this tree. It's just easy with this lens, really, isn't it? Again, it's a nice day to be out, so I'm having fun. <laughs> Alright, so we're back with the telephoto again. Uh, we've got some flowers over here flowers are nice and we've got a lone tree over there so there's some variety here trees and flowers in the park who would have thought just a quick one the settings i'll be using for the flowers are f 2.8 because i want to isolate the subject a little bit let's just have a look One three thousand, well, one three thousand two hundred of a second. So it, it's a quite a bright day today, and obviously ISO one hundred. So let's take some pictures of flowers. Holding this one hand like this, balancing it. It's a heavy setup. It's not that easy. <laughs> little bit of really pink blossom in Harlow Town Park before it disappears so gonna get a couple of ultra wide shots using the 17 to 40 and we'll see how this camera performs switching to the telephoto Right, 
So, I know I haven't really put this through anything particularly strenuous today, uh, but I feel if you're looking for your first full frame camera and you're a beginner, these are the sort of things you're going to be shooting. You're going to be down your local town parks or the local nature reserves. You're going to be shooting the trees, some of the birds and the wildlife, some of the flowers. And that's really what I believe the average user of these cameras today is going to be. Obviously back in the day these were uh, professional cameras so professionals will be using them but that's all trickled down the filter through to the average consumer. Not to mention it opens up the full lineup of Canon's EF full frame lenses and these can be had at a bargain basement price. This is an L lens. This, if you search around, you can get this for about 120, 150 pounds. Normally they go for around 300-ish, but if you search around and do a little bit of digging, you can find these for cheap like I did. Um, and that's how I get my stuff cheap, I search around. Um, things I like about it. Right, so, image quality out of this, as you would have seen through the video, it produces some really stunning images. Um, ones that aren't comparable to today's quality cameras, I mean, but you've got to give the fact that this was released in 2005, I left battery good problems, let's turn that off. This was released in 2005, and as such, it's, uh, it's getting on a bit now, you know? Alright, mild panic over, um, the memory card started flashing on the screen here, um, all the numbers started flashing and I went to go look at the images and they were gone. <laughs> a whole day shoot, poof, up in, uh, up in memory card smoke, but no, alas I turned it off, removed the batteries, put it back in and suddenly the images are back, so not a fault with the camera, that's a fault with the memory card I'm assuming, I hope so anyway. That, that, that would have been a shame. Uh, final verdict, would I recommend the Canon 5D Classic to someone looking to purchase a camera in 2022 or beyond? And the answer is yes, maybe. Um, if you're looking to get your first full frame camera, you'll be hard pressed to find a better deal than this right now. Um, given that it will force you to learn the exposure triangle and in turn that will make you a better photographer in the long run. Uh, because of this camera, I've learned to basically know the settings when you turn up to a place you just look at the scene and you know the settings roughly what you're going to use um, and that was a really good boost basically uh, in the early stages of my photography career so all in all pick yourself up a Canon 5D Classic have a bit of fun get a workout and you have a great time like I do um, if you like what you've seen in today's video you want to see more uh, press that subscribe button, make it from red to grey. Also like the video and comment. <sighs> I might not go straight home, I'm probably going to take another walk around the park with the cannon. Just for old time's sake. I've been Gaff and Gaff Takes Photos and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!